Germans, I mean, I've, I've got a lot of time for the Germans. They're, I mean, they're, I used to know um, Petra Kelly, who was a yeah. Green Party. Yeah. I did a program with her, actually. Did she you? was great, and I corresponded with her a bit. Yeah. She was involved in this appalling suicide pact. Yes. Um, tragically, she was wonderful. Yeah. But I spent, I've spent time there, I've done films there, and I've... Um, uh, well, you know, and actually, funny enough, I was going to Heidelberg to do a reading once, and uh, I realised, I saw the devastation that the this, you know, the acid rain causes the forest. There, you see these sides of hills that are just shorn. I mean, the trees are like twigs with like flecks of green on. You know, it's it's just like. The acid rain just caused total yeah. devastation, and the woods and the whole mythology of woods and forests are so important to the Germans. You yeah. know their mythology of uh, the, the the green man, the vo vodvo. I think they have a special name for the green man. Mm. And, y and years ago, in the Middle Ages, you wanted to chop down a tree, you had to ask the tree's permission, even to cut a branch to, to coppice it. You just have, you had to ask the tree's permission, and so. So I realised then why green politics had such a... I mean, at one point, when Petra Kelly was in charge of the Green Party, they had a sixth of the vote. Six, yeah. They had a, something like a sixth of the vote in Germany. People yeah. voted green. This would be about 1988, something like that, 1987. Incredible! Yeah. Whereas we, who are equally polluted, actually, in terms of... I mean, do you know how many people died? In 2012, from atmospheric pollution, no, worldwide, seven million. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the other day in the paper they were saying one in 20 deaths in Oxfordshire was due to atmospheric pollution. You know, asthma. I mean, my yeah. little boy, Albie, he's got a terrible asthma. I mean, yeah. he's always, he's always yeah. in and out of that rushing him into hospital. It's terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. Fair. But they're making money out of it, so you know, it doesn't <laughs> really matter. You know, a few people here and there, what's, what's the difference? What will it take to see? You know, it was a silly thing on telly called John D. Do you remember that? Yes, indeed, yeah. And Gordon Newman is. I mean, I can't quite call him a friend because I don't really know him very well, but he cast me in, in it. In something, and he, he's friends with Troy Kennedy Martin, who was a friend of mine. He did, Troy did um, Edge of Darkness and Z yeah. Cars and I lived around Notting Hill. Um, and Gordon was a great friend of his. And uh, I did this episode of George John Dee, I played some. Scientists, I give evidence about something or I forgot what it was now. And Rebecca was there, and she's so fierce. I mean, he and Gordon, Gordon fed all, insisted that people could only become part of his crew if they if they agreed to a vegan diet. You know, and, yes, absolutely. I mean, all the, I don't know where he got a crew from because you know crews like Jake bacon butties. You know, that's food to them, not yeah. not um, soya sandwiches. Uh -huh. <laughs> Yeah. Freaky storms or natural catastrophes Or how about the rising seas Greenhouse gases in the air we breathe Smog in the big cities Methane up in our atmosphere It means global warming's here but, uh, he's, um, he's a brilliant writer actually yeah. He did a fantastic We all feel the climate changing It's just mother nature raging you know we've only got ourselves to blame. I mean, it had an anecdotal value, but I mean, I can remember working on, actually I worked on Stormy Monday, which is my... If we keep dealing with the devil, dealing with the devil. Foundation, actually, which was, uh, I wanted to call Vala Volk, and it was called, um, he said, when Lutz came to came to see me in England to discuss it. He said, we can't call it that.
I'm calling that. Volk. Right. Uh, that is a word from Nazi time. Right. Can't use the word Volk. Father Volk. Yeah. Well folk. Yeah. Can't. Because it's got this nationalistic resonance, you know. And um, so it has to be just called Divala, the whales, you know. Uh, which was it's okay. But the idea, it, my idea was to have something that personified whales, you know, whale nation, that made them people, really. It was meant to be brazenly anthropomorphic, you know, in some way. And so that point was missed when translating it into German. So yes, they're, they're touchy still. If we kill with the devil, deal with the devil. Having a conversation with him, he said, oh, Mike, can I have a word with you, Mom? And what he wanted to have a word with Mike about was the fact that his Winnie Pago was a foot shorter than Melanie Griffiths. <laughs> if we Dealing with the devil, we'll make this world a living hell. I mean, that is guys measure it. You know, I've had my guys, you know, and Mike told me this after, so after the conversation, I just thought, I can't believe that. It's just unbelievable. We keep on adding precious fuel to the fire till our natural resources dry up. About the first world war. Yeah. Yeah. Can't to counteract David Cameron. Yes. And he's set aside yeah. 15 million to yeah. essentially glorify, so called yeah. commemorate, but essentially giving permission to have other wars, isn't it? I mean, yeah. red hot to go into Syria. Yeah. Oh, it's Greedy people kill the earth for a dollar, just wait till they kill each other. It means that I'm spared. Those moral dilemmas that always exercise me, like, do I pay for Trident or not? Um, so, you know, what I was faced with that, I, I signed the money from Well Nation to Greenpeace and Co. And, um, you know, the, uh, the, you know the, um, the activists' boat and stuff like that, so I didn't have any money. But... Um, so I was, and now I'm below the radar, I'm, I'm ec I have no economic profile, which is as, you, as I would wish it, because I'm not, I don't have to think about, do I, okay, do I take out a certain proportion, so I don't have to pay for the British Army being in Afghanistan, or for Trident, or whatever, things for which I feel sick at the idea that I, so I try and live without, Without um, you know, those embarrassments, but it's not always possible to be totally consistent. We were so close, there was no room. We bled inside each other's wounds. We all had caught the same disease. We all sang the song. All right. We put on concerts there every week. We rechristened it the album Free State Meet Roxy. Oh, right. We put on free concerts every week, and there was a band that was a sort of spin off of Gong called. Um, uh, a band named a bit like New Two, but it was um, Everyone everyone Involved, it was called. Oh, right. Everyone Involved, yeah, with a lead singer, a lovely chap called Keith Keith, who was still going, I think. A sense of communitas, don't you? Yeah. You smash it, yeah. and you don't, you can't get it back. No. So you renationalise the railways. You won't be able to recreate that. You know when, when they say, "Oh, there's overmanning." On on a railway station, you had porters carrying luggage for disabled people. You had somebody tending the flowers, so the place looked great. So you know when Ed, yeah. Edward Thomas says, "I remember Adolf Strupp." You know, in the poem, yeah, it probably you can conjure it up in your mind's eye. You can see, yeah, yeah. A guy in a pipe with a pipe and a uniform and yeah. tending the geraniums and stuff, yeah. and it's all magic. Yeah, it's unmanned now. 
It's not um, the railway children anymore. Yeah. Well, you pay it. You, you, there's a price. <laughs> you said, yeah, what world are we living in? I mean, this is kind of Talmudic, isn't it? It's yeah. kind of, it's just insane. And that's right, the same, you know, you talk about not learning people's mistakes. I mean, in relation to Pfizer and their, bid, their impending bid for whatever it is. You know, the company in um, um, Sandwich. Well, or wherever they are, Astro, whatever they call that company. Um, I mean, people have got a very short memory. They don't seem to remember that once upon a time there was a Cadbury's. In where Bristol wasn't it, yeah. Somerset, yeah. and it was like a dream company. And lo and behold, it's taken over by this disgusting American <laughs> company that makes tasteless cheese for craft. Yeah. Whereas Cadbury's disappeared without trace. Do you hear yeah. sight nor sound of it? It's in yeah. Czechoslovakia, uh, tasting different. I understand. Right. And tastes like chocolate. Yeah. Don't know what it tastes oh, like. Axle yeah. grease. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we sound like we're harking back to better times. No, I think so we are. Two old men, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing I can, yeah, I can, old I old can remember you could, <laughs> you could, you could take a girl out for a cup of tea in London. I can remember the time when you buy a copy of Time Out, and you still had change out of fifty quid. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my joke. Mm. Um, you know, if this isn't a pre-revolutionary situation with the economic disparity, I don't know what is actually. But it's people are always looking at someone to aspire towards, and therefore they they don't think they're the, the people who are really downtrodden. Do they? No, and I think in, in America, for example, somebody said that the reason there isn't a revolution in America although you could suggest that there should be, is because when it comes to the millionaires who paraded in front of people's, you know, people, people who have got five jobs in order to survive, the reason that them, they're not resent, they don't have resentment of the millionaires is that they believe that they could be, in the American society, that they could be a millionaire. Yeah. They don't seem to realise that the goalposts are always changing. Yeah. The goalposts are always being moved further and further away from them. Yeah. Rough cut, wrapped up Green Puff Estate Agency. We will swap the building of your choice. Uh, found it by what time? 1381. And Patrick was amazing at just spotting empty buildings that were ripe for squatting. And we'd jemmy our way in. I was the hopeless, that's what we were doing. But in the eyes of the authorities, we were conspiring to trespass. Uh, I was exposed in the newspapers. He gemmed his way in for squatters. I was presented as a psycho who gemmed his way through a block. <laughs> block. And um, instead of going around the corner to the tobaccos. But Patrick was... Um, lung cancer and it spread everywhere. I went with China to the hospital and we were too late when we arrived. When we arrived just the other night, we were totally gone. What's that? And uh, trying to contact a friend of his. The statue of Shelley in Oxford. All right. In uh, University College, I think, in marble. And loud mouth, spoiled underground you think it's amusing to remove his balls oh. or paint him red with spray paint oh. and uh, emerge from his mausoleum triumphantly holding marble balls, Shelley's, I call it Shelley's balls. Yeah. Oxford actually should be raised to the ground. <laughs> it's, a, it's a racket. In order to teach people how to govern. Yeah, essentially.
on now. I've just put it on. Yeah, oh, no, 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 now you're going to dry it. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> You've been brilliant, actually. That's good. <laughs>